right, so this uh, section is on mathematical induction. So we're going back to chapter 12. Um, the first few sections in chapter 12, we're looking at sequences. And then we left that, we did a couple other things, and now we're back to chapter 12. So um, this is, is not really exactly related to sequences. It kind of is um, in that we are using natural numbers. But other than that, um, we don't really need the formulas um, that we talked about earlier in chapter 12. So this is kind of a little bit of a standalone section, which is why we started chapter 12 left and then came back to it. So um, the first three sections are not super, super relevant to this. Um, but this is, a, this is a very interesting section. Um, a little bit more advanced than stuff you might see in algebra. In fact, um, if you were to take more advanced math classes beyond, uh, say, Calculus 3, and you get into a junior level math class, um, this is the kind of stuff that you might start doing. So this is kind of an introduction to that. Um, so mathematical induction. So let's start with um, a little exercise here. So um, clearly 1 equals 1, nothing too profound there. Um, let's look at 1 plus 3. 1 plus 3 would be 4. Uh, 1 plus 3 plus 5. So that would be 4 plus 5, which is 9. 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus 7 equals 16. And let's do one more. So 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus 7 plus 9 is 25. Now, um, it'd be a good idea as you're watching this probably to try to try to anticipate where we're going. Um, so where are we going? What, what, what do we notice here? So over here we have all the odd, well, not all the odd numbers, but all odd numbers. So we're... we're kind of increasingly adding more odd numbers. So the this would be the first odd number, this would be the first two odd numbers, and the first three odd numbers, and so on. And now what do we notice on this side? Uh, that would be one squared, this would be two squared, this would be three squared, four squared, and five squared. And maybe if we added 11, we would get six squared, which we did. Um, so, Let's is the question we want to ask, is this true? Is this true for all natural numbers? And we're going to call the natural numbers n. So lowercase n for the natural numbers. Um, so is it true? Um, certainly some things could be true for a period of time or over a certain range of numbers, and then after that they're not true anymore. Um, that could be the case. So so how do we prove that this is true for all natural numbers, or is is it not? Um, so let's let's write this as a conjecture. So a conjecture is just going to be a statement that we think might be true, and then we'll work on on proving that it's true. So um it's our, our conjecture is the sum of the first in odd numbers is n squared. So the sum of the first two odd numbers is 2 squared. The sum of the first three odd numbers is 3 squared, uh, and so on and so on. Is this true, like, if you added up the first... 1,077 odd numbers, would it equal 1,077 squared? Um, obviously, we can't do this for every every odd number, um, but we can um, we can prove that this is true. So another way, a mathematical way to write this is, let's write this as an equation. So 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus 7 plus, oops, plus dot, dot, dot. All the way up to now. What is? How would you write the nth odd number? Um, so, kind of the definition for an odd number. Well, the definition for an even number is two times n. So, an even number is two times n. An odd number typically you write two n plus one. This would always be an odd number because you have an even number here plus one, which make it an odd number. Uh, but you could also write 2n minus 1. That would also be odd. Um, 
And in this case, if we want the fourth odd number, which would be seven, that would be two n minus one because two times four for the fourth odd number is eight, eight minus one is seven. For the fifth odd number, two n minus one, two times five minus one, that would be nine. So for the nth odd number, we can just write two n minus one and that equals n squared. Now, you, you don't have to come up with these formulas. Um, we're going to, I'll show you how to prove this, but you will be given this um, or something like it, whatever the example is, but you'll be given the formula. You just have to prove that the formula is true. Um, and actually coming up with the formula would be the, the more difficult part because you know, you're just kind of, this This one's fairly obvious, but most of them are not, most of them are not obvious. Um, but this is what we're trying to prove. So let's, uh, I've written out some things here, just so we don't have to kind of write everything. Um, but this is the principle of mathematical induction. So suppose we have a statement that says something about all natural numbers n, which we did on the last page. All, the sum of the first n natural numbers is n squared. So that's a statement about all natural numbers. For any ex for example, any for any natural number n, we're going to let p of n, so this is some function p of n, where you can input the any natural number. So it's not for, you, you don't put fractions or square roots or anything like that um, in this function. This is only for 1, 2, 3, 4, so on. So p of n, let p of n be the following statement. The sum of the first n odd numbers is n squared. So then we can see that p of 1 uh, says the sum of the first 1 odd numbers is 1 squared. p of 2 would be the sum of the first 2 odd numbers is 2 squared, and so on. So the main idea, suppose we can prove that whenever one of these statements is true, then the following, then the one following it in the list is also true. So in other words, for every k, if p of k is true, then p of k plus 1 is true. So if we could prove that this one is true, that would automatically show that that one is true. And if we showed this one is true, that would automatically show that p of 4 is true, and so on and so on and forever. So if we can prove that one is true, then the next one is true. And since that one is true, the next one would be true. And then the, it's kind of an, an unending chain of true statements. So this is called the induction step. So now suppose that we could also prove that P of 1 is true. So this would be the first one. The induction step now leads us through the following chain of statements. So if we're given, we'd be given this, or we, we could show this is true. Um, we could show this is true. And then if this is true, then by this statement, the next one would be true. So if that one's true, then the next one is true. And if that one's true, the next one is true. And if that one's true, the next one is true. And it never ends. And so then we get an infinite number of true statements based on if we know that this is true and if we know that this is true. So those two things are the key to this induction. Um, so hopefully this will make sense. Maybe um, you may need to come back um, after we do the examples and watch, um, watch this part again to kind of explain it. Um, uh, at least, at least for me, sometimes you kind of explain abstractly and it doesn't make too much sense. And then you see an example and then it, you go back and listen to it or reread the abstract part, um, kind of the theory part of it. And then it kind of makes more sense. Um, at least that's, that's that way for me. Okay. So to summarize the principle of mathematical induction for each natural number in, let P of N be the statement depending on N. So um, say this that we've already talked about. Um, P of N will be some, some equation, basically. So, and suppose that the following two conditions are satisfied. So P of 1 is true. So the first, plug an N, N into this function, and it's true. And then also for every natural number K, if P of K is true, then P of K plus 1 is true. So if, if you find one that's true, then the next one is going to be true. And then if that one's true, the next one's going to be true, and so and so. And so then P of N is true for all natural numbers in. So let's see how this works. So we have kind of two steps. Uh, the first step, and so these are our two steps. The first step, just show that P of 1 works. So this left-hand side 
will the the length the number of terms depends on what n is. So if if n is one, there's only going to be one term. If n is two, it's going to be two terms, and so on. So p of one will just have one on the right hand side, and then that we want to see if that equals one squared, and of course it does. So one equal so one from this side equals one squared, and, and we don't have to do this next part, but just to kind of show you. What we're doing. If we wanted to do p of two, one plus three, that would be the left hand side, and then plug in two for n over here, we get two squared, which equals four, and that works. Okay, but you, you only have to do the p of one, so you only have to prove that the first one is true, and then after that, we get to the induction step. So this is this is the step one. Now the step two, which is called the induction step, um, this is. I, I think that was called the basic step, the basis step, maybe. But this one, not induction here. This is called the inductive step. Inductive step. Or it could be called the induction step, maybe. But um, so what we're going to do here, so if P of K is true, so we're going to assume that is true. So anytime you have an if-then statement, the if part, you are assuming that that is true. So, um, so we're going to assume that one plus three plus five plus dot 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 plus two n minus one equals n squared is true for n equals one, two, three, up to some number k, um, wherever k might be. And so, so what that means is, to write this in terms of k, one plus three plus five plus dot 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 plus 2k minus 1 that would equal k squared so um so we're assuming this is true now we're going to use this and we want to prove or we want to show that this statement will be true for the next k, which would be k plus one, or the next n, which would be k plus one. So we want to show one plus three plus five plus dot 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 plus two k minus one. Now, what would the next odd number be? The next odd number would be two k plus one, right? So to get to the next odd number, you're just adding two each time. So if we add two to this, 2k minus 1 plus 2, that would be 2k plus 1. So that's the next, that would be the next odd number. And if we're following the pattern, how many odd numbers do we have? We have, we had k plus 1, or we had k odd numbers here. We're adding another odd number, so that would be k plus 1 odd numbers. So we want to show that this statement is true. All right, so we already showed it's true for the first one. If we can show that this is true, that would mean it's true for the next one and the next one and the next one and the next one and up to infinity. So how do we do that? So you want to keep this statement in mind. We're going to use this statement here. So start with start with the right the left hand side here. One plus three plus five plus up to 2k minus 1 plus 2k plus 1. All right. Now, we know that this part is this right here. That equals k squared. So we can replace this with k squared and then plus, and we'll take away the parentheses, 2k plus 1. And now, what does that factor into? That factors into k plus 1 squared. And so there's our inductive step. So we've shown that this side equals k plus 1 squared. So the way we did it, just to kind of recap, we're, we're using this, because you have to always state your, or assume your, your statement is true for the first k. And then we want to show that if we add another one, then it 
equals what we expect it to equal if, if this formula is true. So, um, so we look at these first terms. The these terms here come from the statement up here, and we're adding this one. So replace that which is in our inductive hypothesis. The these terms equal k squared. K squared plus two k plus one is k plus one squared. Okay. Um, so we'll do some more examples on the next next video.